Hi, my name is Martina and uh, I have been a postdoc with Sandro for three years, from 2015 to 2018 during the NOMAD project. So first of all, I would like to thank Arash and Carla for inviting me today here and giving me the chance to say a few words about my experience working with Sandro. I have decided to call my talk Building Bridges and Connecting Scientists and this is because during my time with Sandro these were really the qualities and the skills that I have appreciated the most and I have learned the most from. I will start by giving you an overview of the NOMAD project so that we are all on the same page on this but later I would like to give you more details about Sandro's contributions to NOMAD's developments. So NOMAD uh, is a European Centre of Excellence that started in 2015 and it involved eight research institutes, four computing centres and PhD students, PI and postdocs from all over Europe. We could really say that NOMAD started with the NOMAD repository. The NOMAD repository is today one of the largest repositories in the world for computational materials data. In fact, it counts over 50 million entries and it accepts inputs and outputs from 40 different codes. So the main idea is to use the information contained in the repository to maybe find new materials or trends in materials and so forth and so on. And the first step towards this was to build different kinds of frameworks that could help scientists to access the information. And the first one we built was, the, was to make the information in the repository code independent so that people could use it for different purposes. The other two important parts of the framework are the encyclopedia and the analytics. Basically, analytics is a suite of tools that have been developed by several groups in NOMAD. Uh, the tools uh, perform big data analysis on the data pool uh, in the archive based on different, uh, different techniques uh, like machine learning, neural networks or, I mean, other things like uh, clustering. The encyclopedia, on the other hand, can be considered as another way of uh, organizing the data uh, in uh, such a way that can be browsed or can be looked at. So it's basically can be considered as a point of touch between the archive and the data. And so it, um, it, it, we can say it can be considered like a website where a scientist can go search for a material property uh, or information and can even visualize the data. In fact, uh, actually, another part of the project was creating visualization tools such as uh, one for visualizing virtual reality or MD trajectories or this kind of, of advanced tools. Uh, of course, everything was supported by uh, HPC. So NOMAD in, um, in this format, in the way we knew it, uh, ended in 2018, uh, but it actually moved onto a different platform, onto a different format. Uh, all the work we have done, thank God, is still going on and is being kept up to date and useful. I know that uh, some people are using it. Yesterday someone told me that and that's pretty cool. Uh, if you want to know more about the new format, uh, please check out uh, this website on that side. And if you want to know more about the previous format uh, and all the tools uh, which are still available, you can go on the NOMAD website. Having said that, my main point is to give you an insight and an idea of the contributions that Sandro had be given to the project. So, first of all, it goes without saying that Sandro was a man of vision. And I have to say that, apart of being always overexcited uh, when trying new tools like this, uh, which he could do for hours, his main vision was very much, very much in line with Nomad approach, with Nomad ideas. And I have to say that from hearing the talks from yesterday about his past in electronic structure and uh, his past at, uh, running hours and hours of calculations, uh, now I understand why and uh, uh, why he was so passionate on the idea of having data which have already been produced. So you don't have to run new calculations and one can start exploiting the data finally without the same effort one had to make in the past. So that, that's very clear to me now. So for this very reason, I think he contributed to many of the aspects, um, especially in the initial part of setting up the, the idea of Nomad. 
So he was crucial in writing the proposal in 2015, but he was also crucial in supporting, uh, supporting the project during the strategic discussions they had throughout the length of the project, as well as coming up with the new and fresh ideas on how to continue a project that was going to an end, uh, how to make it fresh, how to make it new. So he really contributed to all of these aspects of conceptualizing the project. It goes without saying at King's we were also involved in some practical work, you know, uh, in aspects of developing the archive and the encyclopedia. But of course, his main interest was in developing the big data analytics um, and uh, the tools that were based on the research he carried out in the past years. Uh, so, of course, he was very excited about that. Uh, this is just an example of uh, how the tools uh, were made and uh, looked like. But um, actually, what I really want to focus on, especially because we're talking about fostering communities, is the outstanding contribution to the outreach and the industry networking part of NOMAD. Tell you very briefly what we meant. So during NOMAD, we had a strategy to gain contact with industrial representatives to understand the strategic needs uh, of the industrial sector so that we can produce something that would be of interest for them as well as for academia. Uh, which, if you think about it, is sort of uh, a dream if you manage to. And Sandro um, really wanted to pursue it. So we would do several things to this purpose. The first one was to uh, was engagement with the industrial, uh, with our industrial advisory committee, uh, which names are written below. Um, we were also organizing uh, annual industry meetings to interface ourselves with industrial representatives, and we would carry out uh, um, interviews and we would make case studies, you know, to show the capabilities of Nomad to industries. Um, so at this point, I have to make a little confession. Um, so when I started working with Nomad um, and Sandro, my idea was to my idea was to sort of start working with the man that worked in electronic structure, like I was doing during my PhD. So my pack with him was that I would have worked on Nomad on the things I was interested in. Um, and I have to say that uh, my idea of industry when I started at King's uh, was uh, a bit like this. Um, I'm, not, I'm not proud of this, but uh, I had an education coming from academia and I had no idea about how industry would work or what, we do, what is useful for industry. I was completely oblivious to that. And Sandro, being a man of vision, um, I think he really understands when a person needs to, what a person needs to evolve in a particular time. And so um, he came to me and he said, Martina, I think you should work on this work package, the industry networking. And this is also because Massimo abandoned me in the middle of the project. Uh, so he gave me full responsibility um, and he said, just follow what I do and uh, see how things go. So this is how it started, how I started to work very closely with him uh, to try to build uh, an industrial network. And I have to say that it has been an eye-opening experience for me. And it has been just amazing to witness to how Sandra was interacting with very diverse people. And I found out that basically Sandro could speak uh, three different languages, or maybe four. He was speaking engineering, he was speaking physics, and he was speaking industry, all in the same conversation. And um, for me, that was just like mind blowing because he made me realize how important it is to be versatile, how important it is to be open to listen to everybody needs. And so what we would do is we would contact uh, uh, an industrial representative that Sandra would just know, I don't know how or when, but he would always come in up with a new one. And uh, he would tell them, and this is funny, that we will have a 30 minute interview. And they believed that, except that when they uh, accepted the interview, that lasted two hours and a half. I mean, this is a very important person from a very important company who had only 30 minutes for the interview, but he was just totally sold, like he would take part to the conversation for the whole time and discuss several things. And Sandro, who we know could speak a lot, but also listen very well, even if the person said one word or two, that would be crucial indeed for understanding their needs. And for me, this is a massive and steep learning experience.
So what we were doing with these interviews, uh, what we ended up with was this uh, huge network of industries genuinely interested into the Nomad project. We ended up speaking to industries that were going from automotive to technology to energy, uh, large industries, small industries, uh, and Sandra somehow made people understand that Nomad could be useful to all of them, despite all of the differences in their uh, in the industrial needs. The beauty of this is that by today I'm still receiving emails from uh, Johnson Matty or BP or whatever asking me how Nomad is going, if there are progress and this is amazing to me. Um, I'm, I'm sending all of them to Matthias. So the other thing he was very clever about uh, understanding in industry very well was that to convince someone that something is useful, you have to show them how it works and that it does work for something. So Sandra was very keen on case studies. He pushed the whole team in Nomad to produce many different case studies where industry and universities work together to make interesting products. I'm just gonna go through two that we developed in Kings. Uh, one about IML case study, uh, about making a database for grain boundaries in iron, which was involving Henry and Adam, who should be in the room, or Adamo and Enrico, as Sandro would say, because he would always say their names in Italian. The other one was involving myself, uh, Sandra had a part-time PhD student, uh, student who works at BP. She's still doing her PhD at King's and the project is about studying viscosity of hydrocarbons in extreme conditions, following what Massimo was actually saying yesterday. And so these are the two projects we carried out at King's. So I just want to say that Sandro loved to speak about success stories. He was always saying things like uh, these success stories, uh, this other success story, because uh, he was very good at convincing you that something was worthy. So I will just give you a brief list of what Sandro would say about success stories. So his favorite success story is uh, that Massimo, who was working in Nomad, went working in GE, where he still is, and Sandro would repeat that every day. He would, he would, he loved that. The other one, which I think is a massive success for myself, is that Rachel Ford, the PhD student from BP, she's now still doing her PhD, co-supervised by Chris Lawrence and myself. And so Sandro got me to supervise someone in an industry or in an industrial project, which for me is like a big growth and understanding of having to expand my limit. So the PB, the BP collaboration is still going on and very successful. The AMO project was published in an article and the database works. And this also resulted in many people speaking to each other. Uh, apart from the industry-related part, Adam is still working with FHI to continue developing the analytic tools. So I, I, I really just want to say this, this is just fantastic and this is really a success. Uh, I mean, this is a group of people coming from completely different backgrounds, ended up doing completely different things, but making very good science and having fantastic collaboration. Uh, which I'm, I think it's really the legacy Sandro left for me. Um, I mean, and this is just Sandro having the vision or understanding on, of, of how to put people together. He would know that that person would work well with that other person on that project. And he would just know, and I mean, we wouldn't, or at least I wouldn't. So I want to conclude with the, this other thing we did together. Uh, the last thing we really did together, which was organizing the industry meeting in Cumberland Lodge in February.
So this is something that Sarah has already mentioned, but I could witness to the process of Sandra organizing a meeting. And it was just a, an amazing human experience because the care that Sandra would put at deciding the representatives, at inviting the people, at truly at all of the details of the process was just impressive. And I think even more than that is that he came to me at some point and he said, this event does not make sense if there are not students around. This is not a full networking experience. So we actually managed to get some funding to have students come in and to organize a workshop for them. It was a fantastic work organized in the countryside. We had students, ac academics and industry. And I mean, you can see from the faces that it was not bad. It was actually a very good fun. And I think it was a very interesting experience for everyone. There are many people who attend in, here in the room and they can all confirm we had a great time. My memory of this is that at the end of the meeting we were very tired, you know how these things can be. And there were, the first thing I did was uh, I went to this pub of this country house and I ordered a half pint. Sandro saw me from the back of the room and he said, what are you doing? And I said, Come on, Sandro, we did everything. I think we deserve a drink. And he looked at me and said, totally, let's do that. And so we shared this pint of beer and he could finally, we could finally relax. So Sandro loved art uh, and I did a little piece of art myself to sum up Sandro's contribution to Nomad. Yeah, I know. And uh, I want to thank the Nomad team, the King's team and everyone for listening. <laughs>